I'm over here. I'm actually back here from post-processing, and I realized that the video is going to be something like 35 minutes long, because explaining how almost all of these hundreds of options work really takes a lot of time. And so, I'm here to save everybody who doesn't give a shit about how all the options work once figured out on themselves by themselves later. I'm, I'm here to save your time. And so I'm just going to scroll down on this list. You can pause the video and copy my settings. However, if you want to understand why I made the choices I did, how everything else works, and all the advanced stuff, please watch the rest of the video. There's going to be an annotation. If you're on mobile, there's not going to be an annotation. Uh, just take care of it there. Anyway, here we go. There you go. Anyway, if you want to watch the rest of the video, from this point onward, there's now like something or whatever. There's a timestamp earlier now because actually at the time the video left. And please watch the rest of the video if you want to know how all this stuff works. Or skip to the timestamp, which is now listed, to see how to configure everything after setting everything up the way that I have it set up here. Thanks for your time. Have a good day. So, by request, I'm over right here. And I am going to be sharing my config for Aslan's XVM World of Tanks mod pack. Uh, quite a few people have asked me for what settings I use and what mods I use. So I think I'm just going to go down this list, talk about each mod in question, why or why not I use it. And I think that should be pretty helpful for everybody who keeps on asking me questions on this. So just Aslan specific options real quick. Uh, Check for Asmund's mod pack updates in the garage. There's really no reason not to have this. It's useful and makes life easier. Um, I use green versus violet. I use the colorblind mode in game, not because I am colorblind. It's just that I like fighting people purple instead of red. Personal preference. I recommend trying it if you never have, but otherwise there's no real need. I use Jimbo's DLC uh, contour icons purely due to the fact that they're very much like World of Tanks, as you can see. What they do is that I, they identify medium tanks as a different class from heavy tanks. So if you look, medium tanks and heavy tanks are both gray. Then you have tank destroyers. Light tanks are still the same color. They're actually a little bit darker. And then you have TD, um, TDs and artillery. However, when you're looking at a team list at the beginning of the battle and you're trying to figure out how the enemy team is going to react or where you need to be to do the most damage, Jumbo's makes my life easier because it has distinct colors for each different class. And as, as much as XVM stats actually matter and like seeing how good the enemy players are on the enemy team, who to look out for, stuff like that, what's much more important in my opinion is knowing the enemy team composition and being able to see that with a glance. Because this appears to be whatever the hell that little city map on the is but I will to tell you that they're mostly going to abandon field. They're going to have, uh, the Artie's probably going to be focusing in the city, and the tank destroyers, besides the every, besides the Ferdinand, plus light tanks are all going to go right. That's what I could tell you by looking at this team list, and that is much easier to do than looking at this and being like, oh, well, that's, that's an E75 and that's an E50, because none of that really matters. What matters is what class they are, because that'll dictate what they actually do, which is why I use Jimbo's. Um, 
over target markers you have a couple options here so there are a couple stand ones a couple of these like show your like actual health of the allied and enemy tanks and their skill level and stuff like that i personally don't use any of these purely due to the fact that i think the world of tanks in game ones are fine and i sort of hate how cartoony lots of these look like the damage messages are in a font which just i really don't appreciate so i don't use any of those so for the panels and windows um you have a couple options i i don't use these because client language i'm on the north american server there's no real point in me using that the only two languages really that are spoken here, sometimes besides Portuguese, which is extremely rare, it's usually Spanish and English, and most people speak English, so it's not much of a problem. Versus when the EU, where you have people speaking things like Dutch, French, uh, freaking Spanish, just all of the random languages. So XVM stat icons, you can see you uses XVM. I never really see the point of that. They're just gonna be they're gonna be just as good with XVM as without XVM. We have interior on vehicle icons. Again, just allows me to check over, see what it is. It's just very easy for me to look down that list and see what's going on. Class icons, again, makes my life easy. I can just look at the list. This battle loading window, you have a couple options. You have the advanced battle loading, which shows a lot of extra details here. So you have like tank specific stats and then overall stats right here and then their tier. I don't really have too much reuse for that. Like, some of this could be really useful for gauging how good someone is in artillery, or how bad, in this case, they are. But, generally, general player stats are good enough. I use the same battling with vehicle names, as I'm not that good at reading contour icons. And, as again, as I say, I look everything in my mod pack is designed to be either minimalistic, or super easy for me to read at a glance, so I don't have to spend much time actually interpreting stuff, and I can spend more time on strategy and actually playing the game. Clan icons, you leave them on. I don't know, uh, I usually leave them off. They just don't really matter to me. And if they're in the same clan, it'll pop up in their clan tag and they'll usually be in a platoon, so doesn't, I, I've never really cared. So, statistics tab, I, I use the same thing as in the battle loading window. Players panel, so you have uh, squad icons, which I find super useful. It's usually, it's usually good to know who's going to be working together and who's going to be more effective as a group. Uh, XMQP markers, basically people who are sharing extra data about like whether or not their tank is swept or anything else. I don't use them. I don't care, honestly. Um, it's not, they, it, there's not much important. There aren't many important things you can learn from XMQP. So I just I don't care if people are using it. I don't even personally use it, so this would be irrelevant for me. Uh, for the start mode, I use the large one. Uh, the large one will not look like this. The large one will look like however you set it down here. We'll get to that in just a moment. But uh, it's just basically asking how you want your default player panels to be. Whether they're the short ones with just the icons, the medium ones with the name, medium ones with the tanks, or the large ones that shows you like tank, name, and icons, which is what I use. Background transparency. It's pretty simple. It's how dark the player panels are i keep them at the world tanks default i like how it looks clan icons i don't have selected i don't find really much use for it it's again i just i don't care mainly uh you've covered some bulbs here i think spot markers are super useful because you can tell who's been spotted who hasn't been spotted and for example in detaches it's really useful for being able to just look over and gauge how much the enemy team you've actually contacted and what's not spotted will tell you a lot about the enemy team strategy versus what, even when compared to what is spotted. So I use the, these default bulbs so I like how they look. How are the R asterisk, bulb 2, bulb, and eyes. Just use whatever you like. I use the not hide icons for not spotted vehicles. Again, just at a glance, it makes my life easier. I don't have to read many things. Um, large panels. I use the simple panel too. Because the advanced panel, I, I don't... As I said, I don't want to know all of these tank stats. They don't matter that much to me. For the simple panel, uh, that could be useful. But if I wanted to use a simple panel, I just, I'd probably just use something like or one of these. However, this simple panel is the type of thing that I like. It will actually color these names. This is not representative of how this actually works. It will color these names. I just like being able to see the numbers because 
even though like quite often like this 2000 w8 blue player will look very similar to this 2.2k when it comes to the color palette 2.3k average is much different than 2k average i'm just gonna say that now same with this green look at that 1500 versus almost 2k i, I want to know that difference that that actually matters medium panels i use the narrow one you can just go through these icons see what you like i find hp bars useless and not super distracting because if i want to know what the enemy's team hp looks like i'll press alt if i want to know what my team hp looks like i'll look around it's it's just basically that easy uh xvm minimap so i use the 50 meter auto attack circle you really should always use that it allows you to maneuver very carefully when you're on the bottom of ridges and stuff and just trying to get spotted it makes life easier I use the thin turquoise circle instead of the white one. I like how it looks. I use the 445 meter maximum detection circle, the 564. Like all of these are super important. But the real choice when it comes to these circles is right here. So what you can do is that you can have the view range circle for like, for example, if you had Binox on your tank. This dynamic view range circle is going to update whenever you stand still for five seconds your binox activate. It will get bigger as your binox work. However, as soon as you move, it'll shrink. You can leave those locations permanently on there and have the dynamic view range circle move between them. I personally don't use it. It's extra clutter that I don't care about. And honestly, with all my tanks, they have such good crews. I know that it's really not going to matter because when I'm using binox, all of my crews are past the maximum detection range so it doesn't actually affect me at all so I, I just don't use it when it comes to lines vehicle direction line I like the long green one the short one always sort of did things to my brain uh, you'll line with dots every hundred meters I like how it looks sort of fits in you can use the turquoise one too in fact I might switch to that right now because you know it's special you can use you can show the traverse lines I don't use that um, that could be useful if you're an arty and these will show up I think no matter what when you're an arty But I don't need them when I'm in tank destroyers, so Extra runners for spot and flip tanks if you use XMQP sure you can do that however it, It's not hard to figure out who's flipped and instead of looking at your main map You could just look around you so I, I leave it off. There's no point now, there, there's some other options, like showing HP circles in the main map, which is pretty cool. Um, and this could be useful, but in my experience, if I want to know the health of that IS-7, this hit point circle will not update if he's out of my render range anyway. So there's no point in me having it, because when this circle is actually able to update, he's in my render range, which means I can literally look around, press the right key, keep my turret point in the same direction, and turn my camera and be like, oh look, that I-7 is on 3 fourths health. That was so difficult. So I, I, mean, I mean, as much as this could be useful, it just it really isn't, at least from my personal experience. Player names, I find this confusing as hell. Use at your own risk. Icons for destroyed tanks, this is really useful. It just lets you know when you're about to run into something on a wreck when you're looking at the map, which has happened an unfortunate many number of times for me. This has saved my bacon many times. The alternate minimap mode, player's name colored by rating on the minimap. I find that useful. It means that you don't technically have to look around if you're looking at your minimap and you're wondering who's going to win this fight. You can be like, oh yeah, we have a bunch of blue players on our team, a bunch of green players on the enemy team. Oh yeah, our blue players are going to wreck them. And then you don't have to worry about that. Like, that just makes my life easier. It also means that you get to see the player names. So you might as well have them colored by rating instead of just player names shown. There's just no point otherwise. Um, icon scale. I use 0.9. Basically, this is just showing how big things are. I like 0.9 just because it's not as tiny and minuscule as 0.65. But 0.9 means that you can actually just see a bit more on that map, which makes life easier. Minimap zoom makes life easier. It shows you just, it means you can ping quickly. And that's important, as I've already said. Like, my thing is being able to do these actions quickly and efficiently. Minimap zoom really helps. I use the big size to position bottom right hand corner. You can have it pop up in the middle of your screen, like shown here, but I personally don't do that because I'm already, when I press control and it's going to pop up, I'm already moving my mouse down to my bottom right. It's just muscle memory at this point. There's no point in me having it pop up in the middle of my screen. Um, so, big bottom right corner, left control. Now you can do this, uh, basically adds this like nice little border with these fancy little minimap coordinates. I don't do it, it's completely personal preference. 
Now here's the thing, is that I also don't use a hit lock. So instead of using something like... So here's the thing, I don't use a hit lock. So instead of using something like this minimap XVM hit log or whatever I just said, I, I don't use any of these. I use a custom one, which is down further in the config. I'll show you that in just a bit. Rating scale, I like the 10 colors of World of Tanks Labs. I like how they do their stats. This all makes perfect sense to me. It looks pretty, 60% and up. Unicum, 99th percentile player, 65% and up. 99.9% .9 tie player. Playing in this range is super enjoyable. People should get there. It's fun. Um, Six Sense Icons. I use custom icons. I like Sauron. I mean, you could also use boobs, but I prefer Sauron because it's Lord of the Rings nerd all the way. And then I love the sound. It's, it's not playing the sound for some reason, but let me just say the sound is pretty amazing. It's. It's a thing. It's it's beautiful. It'll probably work on your version. It's just not working for me this time. Actually, it is working. Never mind. My headphones were off. Hangar XVM settings. The price button, the tech tree. I just keep all of these good on because these are all useful. Like you can go down, look at these. The description at the bottom if you want to see them. But that's that's what I use. And the hangar clock, 24 hours. You use whatever, but. Just I, then again, keeps it lets you know what time it is in game. Use these at your own risk. Multiline tank carousel. Uh, they work fine. I mean, I just don't personally need them. I sort my tanks anyway, so I've just got sort of gotten used to that. Other XGM settings, I recommend these. When chance of the battle interface, you can just press tab. No point having it up there. Um, a lot of players have count frags. Uh, that's irrelevant for me due to some of the mods that I'm going to use down below. But if you like it, play it. This is what I recommend. Camera scripts. Zoom out in arcade. 500 meters. This is super useful. Zoom for sniper. Do it if you want to. But honestly, you can just enable that advanced stuff in game. So there's no point in using these anymore. Unless you want to use 60 times zoom. Which I can tell you is oh so, so very effective. Um... However, there are some very important things here. Disable gun shake effect after shot. Very important. Shadow remover can also be good, though I like to know when I'm actually zoomed in. It just doesn't really bother me. Zoom indicator. At this point, there's one built in the world of tanks. You don't need to use it. Handbrake and sniper view. It just don't, don't, don't worry about it. Like, really don't worry about it. Um, people will disable this red flash. What I'm going to tell you now is that it, this may seem like a good idea. However, if you disable this, quite often you'll start taking hits and you won't really notice it. You'll hear the audio cues, but it won't feel like you're taking hits because this red flash tells you when you're getting screwed over. And it, its actual redness varies by the amount of damage you take, as far as I know. So, like, you, you can judge a lot by the sound and the red flash about how much what just happened to you shouldn't have happened to you. Silver Cross, I love this stuff. So what this does is this means you can enable something called server crosshair, which tracks where your crosshair is and then adds a second crosshair that shows where the server thinks you're aiming. So if you're ever in a lanky situation, you can rely on that server crosshair to bring you through it and still have accurate fire. I do not use crosshair scale. The point five always screwed with me. The big, if you're using the big, you might as well just disable it because it's the exact same thing as not having it enabled. A uh, couple of options here. I don't use the high contrast versions, but I like the fancy blue one because it just, I use a reticle, it's very similar to this, and these two just match together very, very well. Custom damage indicators, they can be a good idea. I, I personally just find they often clutter my interface, so I don't use them. Um, this, this, I'm pretty sure it's attempting to say 50 meter circle, but it's, his. that's like with the auto, yeah, it's showing a 15 meter circle, which is the auto detect range. Um, that's that's how that works. It it just shows you where things are around you, so you can stay out of auto detect range. But honestly, it's it's not it's not a problem. I don't I don't use it. Sweat extended. This makes a lot of annoying noises. 
Uh, it's a great idea initially, but you can usually tell due to the fact that we get ribbons in the top of the game now when you're doing flying damage, so it's not like this really helps much. Six Sense Duration. This is crucial. On all your tanks with Six Sense, what ends up happening is that this now displays your Six Sense icon for 10 seconds. And the reason why this is important is that if you pop out of view as soon as you see your Six Sense icon like a good player would, like you see it pop and you just get out, 10 seconds later you will no longer be spotted, assuming you don't get spotted in the meantime. And that means that this Six Sense icon will disappear at about the same time as when you're not spotted. So, you can use this, especially if you're a light tank player or like to play something that's fast, to get out of view and not have to count those vital seconds. You can focus on doing something else, and then as soon as that disappears, wait an extra second or two and you know you've disappeared off their uh, map and they can't hit you. So, there's some interesting random stuff here. I don't use this. I don't care if they're tracked. I can usually tell when they're tracked. Um, ge generally, that's because like their track's fallen off, but... I mean, if you want to see that, you use that, you can use it. Um, this is some interesting stuff. I don't use it. it. It honestly sort of throws off my aim. This can be useful if you want to work on your situational awareness, but honestly, if you just religiously watch the minimap, this becomes obsolete really, really quickly. Aim helping mods, I, I don't see the point, honestly. Kusko Informer, chat mods. So here's some of the really important stuff. Um, chat scrolling. That's pretty self-explanatory. It makes life amazingly easy. Hide display result display results from the previous battle. Just lets you know if you won or you lost your last battle. Makes life easy. Hide chat messages and replays. Because I often watch replays, chat messages are often bugged, especially with the past three, three or four patches or so. So I just have them disabled. Um, all this stuff could be useful. It's meh. I mean, it's sort of unnecessary. Crosshairs. I don't use a custom crosshair. If you are going to use a custom cross, however, and like if I can't convince you to just not do it and use an in-game one, I'd recommend these two. Either use Jimbo's crosshair with two circles in the Melty SPG, or use one of the Melty Math mods because Melty Map mods, Math mod. Um, because these are great. These two crosshairs are probably the best custom crosshairs that you can get, and they just they're wonderful. However. I recommend not using that and getting used to the in-game crosshair because quite has the in-game crosshairs are actually really good now. They added a fourth option for in-game crosshairs, which just makes people's life easier. I'll probably show that when I go into the game configuration settings for this. Uh, I just use the custom SPG crosshair and either Pro Arty or Melty. I usually use Melty. So effective armor calculator, that's a thing you can use. Basically, just look at that picture. I don't use it. Uh, battle assistant. This is super useful. It gives you a like basically a sort of a side on bird's eye view that matches the trajectory of your shell. If you ever play Artie, get this mod. Triggered by the G key, use it. It will make your life easier. Guns constraints. I have these disabled because these like guns constraints will just turn it on for every tank that has gun constraints, which sounds like a good idea. But when these things are popping up when you're playing your ELC, it can get sort of annoying. So I recommend leaving it off. And then these gun constraints will only pop up for relevant tank destroyers, which is exactly where they need to pop up anyway. So, totally side in the map, just shows like where you're aiming. So let's picture this thing's actually pretty cool. I use the first one. However, all of these are pretty great. So, in terms of, so you can have two different like shell icons, but they really fixed the shell icon problems with the last patch when they changed them and that's all good now. Damage logs. Damage log by Gambiter. Use these settings. Like, I'm just going to say this now. I think this one is the best. These other ones are sort of either like super flashy, or they have lots of stuff pop up in your screen, or they. Or they just basically have no shit moments. Whole hit by enemy. No shit. <laughs> just kidding. Like, no shit. Like, why do I need to know that? I, I don't. But, the, but what this one does is that it shows you the reload time of the tank that just shot you above all your damage. And then I have it hide player names, that way it just doesn't get too cluttered and it looks like this. And it also shows a reload time right here. So if he had gotten hit by that T-54 mod 1, he would have a countdown timer going like 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And that's super useful in a 1v1 engagement. It means you can time whether or not you need to pull back, or if you can put another shot into them before they reload. And that's just, it, it takes into account their crew and everything else, it's, it's wonderful. 
Um, here's the non-XVM hit log. I use a W8 slash efficiency calculator. Now, this is the other part. Is the only reason why I use just these and I don't use W8 plus damage or whatever is because I have a mod later on, which is a team health bar mod. And if you're gonna end up using that mod, use W8 plus efficiency because that mod already calculates and tracks your damage in the top left hand corner for you. It already has a damage calculator. However, if you're not going to use that mod, please come back to this and set it to W8 plus damage or W8 or damage plus W8 plus efficiency. Otherwise, set it to this for now and continue on with me. Guys, performance mods, no fog. Gives you an extra one or two FPS and it makes the game less foggy. Disable shot smoke and flames. So the reason why this is important is because tanks like the E25 will cause tiny micro stutters in the game, which can throw off your aim when they fire. Because the shot smoke, because they fire so quickly, the shot smoke doesn't fully dissipate, so it keeps on adding and adding and adding. You get a bigger and bigger cloud, and it just screws with stuff. So I have this disabled. It means you can still turn up the settings all the max, and you won't get those micro stutters. Safe shot. This always pissed me off as I'm firing right next to an enemy tank. They'll be like, oh no, don't shoot, and I, I just stop it. I mean, I, usually people have tr enough trigger discipline that they can avoid doing team damage. And this is the mod right here that does, like, the damage calculation. Top left does it, and then right here, there's this team HP bar. I like how it looks. It also shows you what you need to do to get high caliber. It also, it also shows you your team list, and basically how far up on tanks the enemy is versus you and stuff like that. It's, it's very nice. I love how it looks. This is my favorite one. I use this one, the team HP bar by Armageddon. Now, you have no excuse not to be using this. Automatic equipment mounting and dismounting. It means that if you have like three pairs of Vinox and like two camo nets, you can put those in all your tanks. How that works is that when you go into battle, those for that equipment is on that tank. However, if you have a spare, you can assign that equipment to each vehicle and when you switch vehicles, it'll automatically move your Binox and your camo net to the vehicle that you place it on. And so that means that you can use the like two pairs of binox and a camo net, or two pairs of binox and two camo nets for like three scout tanks. And as long as you only play two at a time, it's not like only a two in battle at a time. It's not actually you're never gonna run out of binox or camo nets. So it's it's pretty great. Session stats, yay's increase in session stats. So as you W Nate, so as you how shit you're doing. He fucked up earlier. If his past three games look like that, he fucked up. Um, <laughs> somebody's been playing tanks. Uh, but anyway, so that's stats and stuff. I, I use these, the V1. It looks good. There are also other session stat mods. You can look at them if you like, um, whatever. However, I would recommend you use Asian Creations because it has this reset stats daily at 6 a.m. option. And that just means that each session you have to, it'll show you your stats for that session in particular. It means that if you did shit the day before, you can still do well and it'll still look like you're doing well. It, honestly, it's just, I think it's better for people's morale to have that reset every day. Garage appearance. Uh, hangar manager, I, I use this because I like having the 4th of July garage. Clan mod, it shows you when battles are. Like, it, this will just pop up when you're in game. It's pretty great. Uh, Career Speed Extended is a cool mod, or at least it used to be. I'm happy to see it's working. It often takes a while to update between, uh, like, patches, and so that's why I don't use it, is it just, I mean, you should left dry without it. But it shows you how much XP you need, how much to get the next skill, how much you need, like, how many battles it'll take, assuming current or recent, and everything else. It's, it can be really useful. I don't use it. I mean, I... Honestly, skills happen when they happen. When it, at least when it comes to me. So, this is everything else. I use Replays Manager. It means I can auto-upload my good replays. And that just that just makes my life easier. If you're into making battle results prettier, you can have, like, battle results with Serb. That way you have the RNG Jesus on your team at all times. Um, or you can have custom graphics that, you know, look all pretty and stuff. Or you can have half-naked women. Because, of course, why wouldn't you be able to have that? There are also various sound mods and stuff down here, which is useful. But that's that's all that I use personally. So I assume this video has probably run a good 10, 15 minutes or so. And I apologize for that. There's still some in-game stuff that have to be configured. 
but that is how I configure Amazon's XVM OT mod pack, and those are all the reasons why I have it configured that way. Please change it as you see fit, but I hope this base configuration will at least give you some idea about how to get things to work. Um, basically, press the next button, hit clean install, click next, blah blah, it'll do all the install. I've already run with this setup, so there's no point in me doing it, but I'll do it anyway just for everybody else's benefit, as they totally care about me doing this and I will see you in the game momentarily. Oh, however, there is one thing. Make sure you check this. And if you've never used XVM before, this is how it works. You have to sign in. Uh, like, you have to check that little box. It'll bring you to this web page. This is an amazing web page. You click Sign In, North America. And if you're signed in on the World of Tanks website, it should auto automatically just log you in here. You have to click Activate Services and then Update Statistics. And that's all you have to do. Now when you open the game, open up World of Tanks, it will actually show you the XVM stats for your player and all the other players that it's relevant for. Anyway, here in game, here we are. Um, going through here. There are just a couple settings that are super important for someone to set up. So, if you like replays, do that. If you want simplified technical characteristics, those are simplified. I personally don't use that because I hate having to undo like the little tabs just to see basic stats, so I don't have that enabled. Make sure you have these indicators all disabled because you're now using an XVM main map, and so you don't want those overlaying. Um, tips for battle loading stream: I have it set to mini map. That way, you just have the mini map in the center, it makes it look all pretty and new. Um, enable expanded mini map features: never. That's how it should be set up. Performance badges, arc of fire, camera direction, vehicle markers, basically just set these up, set it up the way that I have it set up here. If you're using like the mod pack, it's very similar, or at least using a server reticle and all that stuff. Set it up like this, especially if you're using the same type of gun sight system as I am, or even if you used a custom one, like dynamic camera, horizontal stabilization, and sniper mode, and if you want 16 or 25, use that. Um, I don't know why I have that enabled. There's no real reason for me to have it, but might as well leave it. Um, do whatever you want to here. Now, when it comes to the fun stuff, I'm going to go to reticle. Uh, everybody who actually uses like a different reticle than me, you're going to have to go in game to be able to configure this. However, if you decide to stick with my mod pack almost completely and are using the same type of aiming reticle and aren't using a custom one, uh, this is how what you want to do. I I like minimalistic stuff, so this is how I was set up: dashed, O-shaped one, circle four, crosshair one, and then all that at a hundred. And I have it set up the exact same way in sniper mode. Everything at a hundred. Um, after you've done looking at that, let's give you some time there. Markers. I just configure it however you want. I mean, I I use it like this. If you're using percent. Uh, you should probably not use percent anymore because if I'm being honest You could just use HP left or hit point left total and instead of having to press alt to look at how much um, hit points they have It's it's just easy to be able to see that it's not honestly that cluttering so there's not really much of a point in uh, well Leaving that as percent it just adds an extra step for you to calculate it whether or not you can one-shot someone so those are all the settings, right, right here, right there, right here. Now that you have that all configured, feel free to look around, do whatever you want. If you're using the garage mod, you can change that by going through and right here and just setting up stuff. But besides that, that's everything covered. So I hope you enjoyed like copying everything that I did, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Mulberry out.